Okay. In our warm up, in exercises four through six, find the indicated measure and explain your reasoning. So, in number four, it wants us to find AC. Okay. AC is that base side, that's from point A to point C. Well, first of all, we need to figure out one piece of information. We know that these two sides are congruent, right? Is that enough to say that BD is the perpendicular bisector? It's not. We need one more piece of information. What we need is to know if where DB, that line down the middle, if where that intersects AC, is it a 90 degree angle? Do we know if that's 90 degrees or not? No. We don't. Can we figure it out? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Why? How? Um, uh, triangle. Ah, BCD. yes. Triangle BCD. What about triangle BCD? Uh, it may not have an identified third angle, but the other two are. Good. So we can do 180 minus 30 minus 60, right? Because we know this angle. We know this angle. So in order to figure out this one, we do 180 minus the other two. What's the measure of that angle? 90 degrees. Booyah! So we've got a perpendicular bisector, okay? Remember, Either you're going to be given that these two sides, like AD and CD, as we see, are congruent. This one is congruent to this one. Or you're going to be given that these two are congruent. Okay, But you also need to prove that it, it intersects at a 90 degree angle. Two pieces of information. Then you know you've got a perpendicular bisector. But are we using the converse here or the regular perpendicular bisector theorem? Who remembers from yesterday? Are we using the regular theorem or the converse? Okay, it seems like we got a little bit of a slow start. We're using the converse, okay? This is the converse perpendicular bisector theorem. Okay. Remember, if we were told that this was congruent to this, then we're using the regular perpendicular bisector theorem because we know it's a bisector because it cuts that side in half, cuts it into two pieces, and we know that it's perpendicular, so perpendicular bisector. But if we're given these two sides, the ones that we're given, we don't know right off the bat that it's a bisector. So we have to use the converse perpendicular bisector theorem. Okay? Converse perpendicular bisector theorem. And now we can write that two line segments are congruent. Which two are congruent? Good, AB and CB. Okay? And what are AB and CB? What could, we need to put it in terms of x, so that's going to be negative x plus 25 equals 3 times 2x minus 8. Now, guys, I know a lot of you guys started with this step. No bueno, okay? You have to put down the theorem that you're using. Please remember that, okay? You have to, have to, have to put down the theorem that you're using. Too many of you guys on your assessments are neglecting that portion, okay? Make sure you're putting down the theorem that you're using. Whenever it says explain your reasoning, you need to put a theorem. If it just says solve for x, solve for x by all means, okay? But when it says explain, I need to see a theorem, okay? So converse perpendicular bisector theorem, we can set those two equal to each other. And when you solve this, you just got to distribute the three. You're going to get negative x plus 25 equals, what does this right side become? 6x minus what? 24. 
Okay, what'd you guys do? Did you add x to both sides? Yeah. Or subtract 6x? Add x. Okay, I added x too. Let's add x to both sides. We're gonna get, well, these will cancel. So 25 equals 7x minus 24. You can add 24 to both sides. And then we're gonna get, what, 49? equals 7x. Did I do that right? And then divide by 7. Did you guys get x equals 7? Okay. So x equals 7. Is that our answer? No. No. It's not our answer. How do we find our answer? Okay, we got to plug in what x is, but then what else do we have to do? It's asking for ac. So let's plug in for x. And then what do we do? You add them together, guys, okay? So we're gonna take whatever we get and we're gonna add them together because it's AC is both of those sides, right? It's not just one of those line segments, it's both of them, okay? So we have to plug in for X and then add them together. So this is going to be negative seven plus 25 plus three times two times seven minus eight. So we're gonna get negative seven plus 25 is 18, plus three times, or well, two times seven is 14, minus eight is six. So three times six, 18 plus 18 equals 36. That was a long problem. Number five, guys, was really, really tricky, okay? So number five, did anyone get 45 degrees? Okay. I'll go over why it's 45 degrees. The main thing here, guys, is you were, I wanted you guys to draw a line down the middle here, okay? And let's label this point P. What are the coordinates of that point P? Because remember, N is at zero, zero. M is at five, zero. What are the coordinates of P? What's that? 2.5 or five over two comma zero. What's true about that line LP? <coughs> Well, LP is the perpendicular bisector of MN. Because NP is the same as PM, and this is a vertical line crossing with a horizontal line, so therefore it's a 90 degree angle. Okay, so what's true about LM and LN? What's true about this side and this side? if LP is our perpendicular bisector. Okay. 
okay? Those two have to be equal to each other. So LM and LN are congruent. by the perpendicular bisector theorem. Okay. Now, the triangle LNP becomes isosceles. So triangle LNP, I'm sorry, LNM, my bad. LNM is isosceles. And both base angles equal 45 degrees. That's a five, by the way. Five was very tricky, okay? If you still don't understand five, even after we went over it, okay, don't worry. This was a tough question. I won't ask you guys a question like this on an assessment. Okay, number six. We want to find the measure of UTW. That's this whole angle here. Well, first of all, what do we know from the diagram? Can we put any congruence marks on anything? Yes, very good. UV is 9 and WV is 9. Awesome. So we can put two congruence marks there. So what theorem do you guys think we should be using? It's not the perpendicular bisector theorem. We're going to use one of the angle bisector theorems. But is it the converse or is it the regular one? Converse. Very good. Why is it the converse? Converse angle bisector theorem. Who knows why it's the converse and not the regular angle bisector theorem? Because it doesn't show us the angle. Very the good. Angle it, shows us the... it shows us what? Uh, I forgot what it's called. Oh, like the, where the right angles are. Yeah, exactly. It shows us these two, right? For the regular theorem, guys, you always need to know that this angle is congruent to this angle. We weren't given that information, okay? So we can't use the regular theorem. We have to use the converse. Now, we know that those two angles must be the same, right? So what we can do is we can write the measure of angle UTV is equal to the measure of angle VTW. What's the measure of UTV? in terms of x? Two x plus three. Uh-huh, two x plus three. What's the measure of VTW in terms of x? Five x minus 24. Mm-hmm. And all we gotta do is solve, okay? So let's go ahead and solve this. Let's subtract two x from both sides, minus two x. We're gonna get three equals 3x minus 24. We're going to add 24 to both sides, plus 24. We're going to get 27 equals 3x, divide by 3, divide by 3. x equals nueve.
But that's not what it was asking for. It's asking for the measure of UTW. How do we find that? How are we going to find UTW? Solving the, those, two, those two angles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plugging it in and then doing what with them? Adding. Adding them together. Okay, so let's plug in x equals 9 and let's add those two together. So we're going to get 2x plus 3 plus 5x minus 24. Adding these two together, plug in x equals 9. So 2 times 9 plus 3 plus 5 times 9 minus 24. This will give us 18 plus 3 plus 45 minus 24. 21 plus 21, 42 degrees. Wow, that was a lot. Heavy on the warm up. <laughs> okay guys, since nobody really asked homework questions, this was a good warm up because it kind of like was some of the tougher questions in regards to our homework. Um, but make sure that you guys know how to do these types of problems, all right? Cool. Does anyone need more time on this slide? Okay, guys, today we are diving into section two of chapter six. It's called bisectors of triangles. And there's two main vocab words in this lesson. There's something called a circumcenter and an incenter. And we're gonna go over what each of those are. They have different properties, okay, but they're not the same. Concurrent lines definition. This is just a definition. Three or more lines, rays, or segments that intersect in the same point. Point of concurrency. It's the point of intersection of concurrent lines, rays, or segments. Go ahead and draw a nice little pretty diagram of one, two, three lines. And that point in the middle is what we call our point of concurrency. Your point of concurrency is where the, all those lines intersect. Three or more lines, rays, or segments intersect at the same point. Don't write this down. Would this, over here, be a point of concurrency? No. Why? Because it's just two angles. Good, it's just, a, it's just two line, line segments that meet up, right? You need a minimum of three. This would be a point of concurrency. Do you guys see the difference? It's gotta be at least three lines, rays, or segments that intersect at the same point, okay? All right. Circumcenter theorem. So the circumcenter of a triangle is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. If PD, PE, and PF are perpendicular bisectors, then PA, PB, and, and PC all equal each other. So let's go ahead and fill in our congruence statements for this circumcenter, okay? PD, PE, and PF, go ahead and put just above them, those are the blue lines that you're seeing. Each of those are your perpendicular bisectors. Okay, so if they're perpendicular bisectors, we can make some congruence statements about the sides. What's going to be congruent to B 
E, if PE is the perpendicular bisector. Say it again. BD. So BD, not necessarily. If PE is the bisector of that side, BC, it splits it into half, right? What's the other half of BC? EC. E this one has to be equivalent. <coughs> what about FC? A, no, FA. Ah, FA or AF. Yep. And last one, DA. DB. DB. Good. So remember, P, D, P, F, and P, E are perpendicular bisectors. So each of these also make a 90 degree angle with their side. Okay? And what's interesting about the circumcenter is that if you go from the circumcenter, which is P, and you follow the red lines to any of the vertices, all three of those line segments are congruent, okay? So go ahead and put another mark for each of those red lines that all four, all three of those are congruent. Now, keep in mind, the blue segments, all those perpendicular bisectors, those are not congruent for a circumcenter. Okay? So for our circumcenter, the blue lines are not congruent necessarily. How come they're not congruent if um like everything else around it is? <laughs> so good question. Like good question, Teresa. You're like Everything else is congruent but those because, I mean, look at it. PF, does that even look remotely close to the same length as PD? No. No, not really, right? So the circumcenter is formed by finding all the perpendicular bisectors and then finding out where they meet. Now, I'm going to show you something later on where the perpendicular bisectors are equivalent. Okay, but for a circumcenter, you have to know that the perpendicular bisectors, the length from their circumcenter to the side is not congruent. Okay? All right, guys, next slide is just showing you where the circumcenter would be in three different kinds of triangles. So remember, your circumcenter, how you find it is you want to find the midpoint then draw your perpendicular bisector Okay, so where these perpendicular bisectors meet, where they meet, is where your circumcenter is going to be. So for an acute triangle, okay, here's our midpoint, perpendicular, so 90 degree. Here's our midpoint, perpendicular, 90 degrees. Here's our midpoint, perpendicular, 90 degrees. They all meet at point P. For an acute triangle, it's always going to be inside the triangle, okay? Your circumcenter will be inside. Write down below A, I for acute inside. In the middle one, for a right triangle, your point P, your circumcenter, is going to be on your triangle, on your hypotenuse, okay? So underneath, write R, on for right for a right triangle it's going to be on your triangle and then for an obtuse triangle your circumcenter will be located outside the triangle so it'll be o and o obtuse and outside you guys have to find a way to remember those three okay 
Acute inside right will be on the triangle and then obtuse will be outside. Okay, we're gonna do an example where we're gonna find our circumcenter. Hold on, I have a question. Yeah, is that good, Karen? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Okay, those of you that are done on this page, go ahead and go to the next one and plot those three points. Plot A, B, and C. Good, Karen? Inside, outside, or on the triangle? On the triangle. On the triangle. Okay. So let's plot these points. A is at 0, 3. So we're going to go 0, 3 is right here. This will be A. B is at 0, negative 1. So that's going to be here. And C is at 6, negative 1. So over 6, down 1. This will be C. What kind of triangle do we have? Right triangle. Good, we have a right triangle, okay? So where's our circumcenter going to be? Uh, zero, negative one. Uh, I don't need the, ex the exact coordinates, but where yeah. is it? In terms of like, is it gonna be, okay? That's always a way we can check ourselves, okay? So the circumcenter should be somewhere on the triangle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the two easiest sides of any triangle and we're going to find the perpendicular bisector to each of them, okay? So the two easiest ones are gonna be our legs. So let's pick AB and let's pick BC, okay? So we're gonna pick AB and BC. For AB, we need to find the midpoint and we need to find the slope. For BC, we need to find the midpoint, and we need to find the slope. Okay, for let's take a look at AB. Where do you guys think the midpoint of AB would be? Uh, one. Zero, one. Zero, one, very good. Why is it, why is it here, Marcos? Very good, it's the middle of that line, okay? It's two units away from B, and it's two units away from A, so this is our midpoint. Okay, so our midpoint was zero comma one. What's the slope of AB? Be careful here. What's the slope of AB? It's a vertical line. Mmm, it's not zero, guys. Undefined. Undefined, okay? Undefined. Remember, the slope of a vertical line will always be undefined. Vertical. So, quick question. If we want to find the perpendicular bisector, right? What kind of line is the perpendicular bisector gonna be? If we need, what kind of lines are perpendicular to vertical lines? Horizontal. A horizontal line will be perpendicular, okay? So from here, let's just draw a horizontal line extending from the midpoint. Boom. We found our first perpendicular bisector. Okay, let's move on to BC. What is the midpoint 
of BC. One, negative one, three. Close. What comes first, the X coordinate or the Y? Uh, three. three, negative one, very good. You had the right one, Teresa, you just mixed them up. <laughs> so this is our midpoint at three, negative one. And what's the slope of BC? Zero. Why? Because it's horizontal, right? So what kind of line should our perpendicular bisector be? Vertical. Yes, a vertical line will be perpendicular. Okay, so for BC, we're going to draw a vertical line through the midpoint. Where do they meet? Three, one. Good. At 3, 1. And does that point lie on the triangle? Yes. Okay, we are good to go. Samantha? Yes. on this slide I can hang around for another 30 seconds but you need to speak up do we need more time on this slide okay no all right thank you okay so all right next part guys we're gonna talk about the in center wait did anyone need more in center the in center is a little bit different okay the in center of a triangle is equidistant from the sides of the triangle so we're no longer taking the perpendicular bisector. We're actually taking the angle bisectors and wherever those meet, okay? So if AP, BP, and CP are angle bisectors of ABC, then PD, PE, and PF are congruent, okay? So in this case, we don't know if AP, BP, or PC are congruent, but what we do know is that this line segment, oh, let me use a different color. This line segment, this line segment, and this line segment are all equal to each other, okay? And the other thing that we know is that if AP is an angle bisector, what angle needs to be congruent to DAP? Uh, PAF. Good, PAF. So those two are congruent. What about D, B, P? What? C, E, P? Which one did you say, Teresa? Um, C, E, P. C, E, P, that's this one. That's the right angle. B P E would be this one. E B P. There we go. E B P. And what about E C P? What angle needs to be congruent to that one? F C P. There we go. F C P. Beautiful. Okay. So each of those red lines are your angle bisectors, okay? So red angle bisector. And then blue is your distance to the sides.
and all are equal. Okay? So in red, you have your angle bisectors. And wherever they meet from that point, the distance to each side is going to be equivalent. This is how we find our in center. Now, it gets a little bit confusing because you're like, wow, this looks extremely similar to the circum center, right? But are our blue lines perpendicular bisectors anymore? They're perpendicular for sure, but why aren't they perpendicular bisectors? Who can tell me why the blue lines are not perpendicular bisectors? Okay, the reason that they're not perpendicular bisectors, guys, is because these sides do not equal each other, okay? They're different lengths. So the length from AD is not the same as the length to BD. It doesn't bisect the side. Do you guys see that? That's the only difference here, okay? They are perpendicular to the sides, but they are not the bisector. They don't cut it in half, all right? Okay, the in center will always be inside the triangle as well, okay? So your in center is the point of concurrency of the three angle bisectors of a triangle. It always lies inside of the triangle. And the circle that, you, that we used to draw outside the triangle is to be inscribed within the triangle, okay? Just another way to put it. Go ahead and put a dot at that point right in the middle and just label that your in center. Okay, guys, we're almost there. Our inset. This is our last example, example two. So in the figure shown, ND equals 5x minus 1, and NE equals 2x plus 11. Find NF. Can NG be equal to 18? Explain your reasoning. Okay, so in this problem, ND is this length right here. NE is this length right here. And NF is this one right here, okay? The reason I know all of those are congruent is because this is my in-center. How I know it's my in-center is because each of these red lines is, ang is an angle bisector to the three angles of the triangle, okay? You can see how it splits it into two, it splits it into two, and it splits it into two, okay? So each of those red lines are my angle bisectors. Therefore, N is our inline. In Sorry. <laughs> if ND equals NE, which we see up above, all we have to do is substitute those variables in now. So ND was 5x minus 1, and NE was 2x minus 11, or plus 11. So we plug in 5x minus 1 and set it equal to 2x plus 11. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides, minus 2x. We get 3x minus 1 equals 11. Is that the bell for us? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, guys, I will finish this. Okay, so then from here, we're just gonna add one to both sides. We're gonna get three x equals 12, divide by three, divide by three, we get x equals four. So now we got x equals four, but we need to find nf. Well, we know nf is congruent to nd and ne, so we can use either of these to find out what nf is. So nf, let's set it equal to ne, okay? So nf, equals NE we know is 2x plus 11. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute x equals 4. 
we're going to substitute in x equals 4. So nf equals 2 times 4 plus 11. And nf, oops, nf equals 8 plus 11. So nf equals 19. Okay, so part B is asking us then to explain if NG can be equal to 18. So NG, if we look, is this segment right here. Now, what you guys had to realize is that NF is the shortest distance from point N to the line segment AC. And notice how NG, point G, lies on AC. So there is no way that NG could be equal to 18 because NF is already 19. We just found that out. So in order for NG to be 18, it would not be, G could not be on AC because the shortest distance is 19. So therefore, NG has to be greater than 19. 18 is not greater than 19. So therefore, NG cannot be 18 and we're done okay notes go ahead and do the homework and you're set this was the end of